Hello everyone and welcome back to another Never After Talkback. Wait. No. No, no, no. We're going to talk about episode 3. And this is way too bright. I know what will fix it. Much better, don't you think? Anyway, before we start talking about the episode itself, this is your one and only spoiler warning. I will not give you out any spoiler warnings throughout this video. Uh, so if you haven't watched the episode yet, please go do so before watching this particular video. And without further ado, let's talk about Never After. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the beautiful battle sets. This is another classic Rick Perry and Co. The designs are amazing. So many details, the little woods, more woods sign, and also the designs of the actual living furniture. This is amazing. I loved this so much. There's something about the entire vibe. And also like, if we're talking about how Dimension 20 features those battle sets, there was a new thing that didn't happen in previous seasons where, where we watched, like where we were introduced to battle sets. There was not like a, a, an interim short ominous music view of, of, the, of the battle set. This happened in episode three. That was so cool. The next thing I wanna talk about is some field secrets. Pib, was introduced to the mule, uh, Alphonse, uh, while exploring the field, moving from carcass to carcass, which is kind of gross, but it's a horror season, so I get it. Alphonse was one thing, and I think in the, the adventuring party, Brennan didn't mention a lot of other things that they could have discovered, but maybe it was part of like a spoiler thing that he didn't want to reveal. It looked like there were a lot of things around the field of battle that the group could have interacted with and maybe found out something extra, like a little tidbit or something like that. So I don't know, what do you think? Were there any other like, I don't know, animals or maybe furniture or, or like characters like Alphonse that uh, might have been around there without like discovering them? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is the strategy. Team extraction versus team distraction, or like both. I wouldn't say this was a complete failure. There was some kind of like missed opportunity there. Correct me if I'm wrong. It seemed like if like the fairy godmother was attacked more than she was, during this battle, they might have dropped her earlier and like maybe they they were able to grab the shard because it felt like team distraction was actually a good idea because Red did actually like make all of those other characters, other enemies go after her. But if there were some more ranged attacks against the fairy godmother and she would have dropped earlier, they might have used this to actually lure away the enemies and to come around to actually grab the shard from the fallen body of the fairy godmother. But it seemed like there were like a lot more focused on like getting to her instead of like trying to attack her from from afar or maybe even like trying to to avoid her but once Rosmond hit her and Brennan was like she has a lot of power but she can take many of these it made me think like it, it was 12 points of damage and also in this world attacks crits might have the potential to kill someone instantly. So I don't know if that was a thing, but I think they might have needed to attack her more, but I don't know. It had like the potential to backfire because she has that rebuke, but maybe, I don't know, maybe it might have been something that they could have done differently and not end this fight with a TPK which is the next thing that I want to talk about. Okay, so this TPK, Total Party Kill, is actually the first in Dimension 20 history. This is not something that ever happened in any other season. And I don't think it felt as grave as it should have felt. Like, for example, the same energy 
uh, in this TPK was the same energy as the first episode of Starstruck where Zack's character gets hit with uh, like the slug and the group around is actually laughing because deep down they know that anyone who has dropout and watched the second episode and not just the first that was released on YouTube knows that the slug is actually Zack's real character. But I think the same happened here where it didn't feel as grave as like the death of, of Emily's character in A Crown of Candy. That wasn't that felt like so easily received. There were tears, they, they actually cried. So I don't know, maybe there's something we don't know going on around in the behind the scenes. My feeling about this is because it's only like episode three, I feel like maybe the cast doesn't have like such a deep connection to those characters the same as losing a character in episode 15 of, of, a season, of a season, or episode 10 even. It's episode 3, we just started. So maybe that was why it didn't feel like such a, uh, such a grave thing to happen to the cast, or something is up. There are some, like, theories that people think that the entire bit at the end where Emily says once upon a time is not as improvised as, as, as the rest of the episode. I do think it is. I think it is improvised, but I think, at least from my point of view, those 16 season of Dimension 20, like the cast, especially this cast in particular, knows how to take a hint from Brennan. So I think that when Brennan told Emily what was the last thing read thought or said this was a hint that okay let's finish off with once upon a time this little secret that you found out that it might mean something more than just the beginning of a story and maybe we'll learn something about this book i think this tpk was not as grave as it should have been but maybe it's part of the storytelling i don't know what do you think i i think if it was if this was any other season and not this one, and not episode three, maybe it was taken a lot more seriously, a lot more grave than how it played out here. What do you think? Uh, I, I'm not sure what else to think about this TPK. The last thing I want to mention in this talkback video is predictions for the next episode. So there's a lot of debate whether there are new characters or maybe the characters are going to return. And I think the cast is not exchanging their current characters. The reason is a lot happened in this episode that makes me think that this was part of a continuation thing. Meaning there might be some kind of mechanic in the world building of this fairy never after world that maybe those characters do not necessarily die when they are dead, like when they are dropped. And not just dropped like to zero, dropped permanently. I think there's a mechanic here. And a lot of a lot of other things happened, like the little tidbits that Brennan gave everyone as they were lying on their deathbed. Why do that if we are never going to return to those characters anyway? Why give them the, the blood red uh, little like pearls or whatever that is? Why give them hints? Like things are happening that might relate to future episodes. So why? Why do this now? Why not just end on a, a very somber tone and and like let the new characters introduce themselves in, in the next episode? So that's my take. My feeling is that there is a lot more story to tell with these current characters and there's a new mechanic that we are going to be shown next episode that will allow these characters to actually relive and continue their story from maybe a different point in time, maybe like a, a future point in time where they just like randomly wake up somewhere. In fairy tales or in stories like I think this world in particular is going to adhere to that old adage or adage, or however you say it in English, don't judge me, that in fantasy and stories, characters don't really die. So that's my take. Let me know what you think in the comments below. What are your predictions 
for the next episode of Never After. And with that, I think we are done. Uh, these were all my thoughts about this episode. If you want to talk about the, the episode, if you have some theories, if you want to engage in community, please join my Discord server, The Nerdy Dimension, in the comments below. I have an invite for you. If you liked this talkback video and you want to see more of them, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel to uh, not miss the next ones if you're not subscribed. And that's all for this one. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.